to Storytime. My name is Linda Boyden and I am going to be your storyteller today. And I'm going to be reading a whole lot of books about one of my favorite things in the world, Halloween. Uh, and Halloween comes in the fall and there's uh, lots of different, oh look, leaves are falling. I wore my autumn shirt today just for this. And so today we're going to be reading all kinds of different books. I'm going to start with Where's Boo by Selena Yoon. Where is Boo hiding? Is he behind the jack-o'-lantern? You know, jack-o'-lantern is another way to say pumpkin. Let's peek. No, that's a candle. Oh, it kind of looked like the cat's tail. Is Boo behind the cookie jar? Oh, it could be. See the tail? Oh, no. That's a hungry spider. Okay. Is Boo behind the broom? Mmm. Maybe. Wait, wait. No, that's just the fancy witch's hat. Is Boo behind the door? Knock, knock. Yes, he is. Trick or treat. Happy Halloween. And that's the first book. Oh, now we're going to get the story of The Legend of Spookly the Square Pumpkin. It was written by Joe Troiano and illustrated, so the pictures were done by Susan Banta. Let's see, a square pumpkin? One day in the pumpkin patch, the strangest little pumpkin hatched. Spookly wasn't like his friends. Where they had curves, he had ends. Spookly was different, he was odd. He was rare. Spookly the pumpkin wasn't round. He was a square. While the round pumpkins had fun rolling along, poor Spookly just sat there, shaped all wrong. He tried and tried with all his might, but he couldn't budge. He just sat tight. The other pumpkins teased him because he was square. Spookly wished he was round and could roll anywhere. That is until one night they all discovered it's fine to be round when the weather is fair, but there are times when it's better to be a square. Halloween was just a day away when a mighty storm blew from across the bay. It tossed the round pumpkins to and fro. It snapped their vines, then off they'd go. Bouncing left, slamming right, banging, banging, what a sight! Spookly sat there filled with fright, but glad to be a square that night. Oh yeah, oh look at them rolling. Suddenly, the fence gave way. Three pumpkins rolled into the bay. Splash! Spookly knew what must be done. It was up to him. He was the one. He teetered and tottered. He tipped and tried and finally flipped to be on his side. Again, he tipped and again he flopped and again he flipped and then he stopped right in the gap where the fence had snapped. He blocked the way, the hole was capped. All the pumpkins shouted, hooray! Spookly the square pumpkin has saved the day. Then a pumpkin hit him with a whack he thought his shell would start to crack. Then another hit him with a thump and another with a smack. 
Then one by one, a ton of pumpkins piled on the stack with a bang and a bash and a crunch and a crash. And then it all went black. At dawn the next morning, when the storm had stopped, the farmer came out and checked his crop. He picked his pumpkins up one by one and laid them out in the warm, dry sun. And when the last was moved away, the farmer could see what saved the day. An odd-shaped pumpkin, short and dense, had wiggled in and wedged against the broken fence. His shell was bruised. Its stem was too. But there was brave little Spookly sitting straight and strong and true. Right then and there the farmer knew of all the seeds he'd ever sown, Spookly's were the most special that had ever grown. And the next year, when it was time to sow, he sowed those seeds in every row and watched them grow. And oh, that morning, about mid-June, when the pumpkin patch began to bloom, there were tiny pumpkins everywhere, hundreds and hundreds, most of them square. Well, but some were cubes and some were rectangles. Some were flat and others were triangular. There was a bed of bright red ones. There were two rows of blue. There were polka dotted, oh, polka dotted ones and rainbow ones too. There were thousands of colors and hundreds of shapes. Oh, what a garden variety makes. Now, every year on Halloween, Spookly's Patch is quite the scene. People come from far and near to see what wonders will grow that year. They stop, they gawk, they gaze, they stare. Then they pick a pumpkin that's round, rectangular, or perfectly squared. Now you know the story of how Spookly grew. Maybe someday if you tell someone too, they'll go tell someone who'll go tell another, and maybe one day we all will discover you can't judge a book or a pumpkin by its cover. And that's the story of Spookly. Oh, look at this is a big book, isn't it? See the big size? It's called Red Leaf, Yellow Leaf by Lois Elhart. Oh, here we go. So that means that Lois Elhart wrote the book, wrote all the words, and drew all the pictures. I've been saving this little leaf from my sugar maple tree so I could show it to you. I love my tree. It was born long before I was. The wind blew seeds, these are the seeds, from the big maple trees in the woods. They twirled and whirled and fell to the ground. Seeds the squirrels didn't find lay sleeping among the leaves until they were covered with snow. So that's winter, right? When the spring sun warmed the seeds, they sprouted and sent roots down into the soil. Tiny leaves unfolded on their stems. I think my tree would have been happy to stay there forever. But one day, nursery workers came to the woods to collect tree sprouts. Now, nursery workers are like gardeners. They transplanted the sprouts and tended them year after year. Just as the trees were settling in, they were measured, marked, and uprooted again. Each ball of roots was wrapped and tied with twine. And here's the, where all the roots are, right under this cloth. Let's see what happens next. 
My tree was loaded onto a truck filled with other trees and delivered to the garden center. Aha! We went there in the fall and picked out my tree. Dad had a hole already dug waiting for it. When we got home, we lowered my tree into the hole. I held the trunk while Dad covered the roots with soil. Now, every night before I go to bed, I peek out the window and wave to my tree. When it snows, I hang up treats for the birds. Oh yeah, little pine cones full of uh, bird treats. Each spring, I look for signs that my tree is growing. By late summer, the crown of leaves is bushy and green. I love it when the tree flowers turn into winged seeds again. But if you want to visit my tree, come in the fall. That's my favorite time. Can you guess why? Ha <laughs> ha. And then this book has all kinds of facts in the back for older readers to learn more about the sugar maple trees. Right? So that's that one. Ah, ha, ha. I think I'm going to go with this one next. This is Go Away, Big Green Monster by Ed Emberly. Big Green Monster has two big yellow eyes, a long bluish greenish nose, and a big red mouth with sharp white teeth. Two little squiggly ears and scraggly purple hair. Oh, oh, he's scary. And a big scary green face. But you don't scare me, so go away, scraggly purple hair. All right, watch the hair go away. <gasps> Go away, two little squiggly ears. Will the ears go? Oh, wow. Let's, let's keep going. Go away, long bluish greenish nose. Whoop. Oh. Go away, big green face. Oh. Go away, big red mouth. Go away, sharp white teeth. Oh, yeah. Go away, two big yellow eyes. Go away, big green monster. And don't come back until I say so. All right, for my last book, I have The Hollow Wiener Dog by Dad Pilkey. There once was a dog named Oscar, who was half a dog tall and one and a half dogs long. Look at him. Ooh, I see something up in the trees. Mm. Because of his unusual shape and size, all the other dogs made fun of him. Wiener dog, wiener dog, they called him. And Oscar did not like it one bit. Of course not. Oscar's mother was no help either, really. Every morning when the dogs walked off to obedience school, Oscar's mother stood in the front yard, waving and calling out, Farewell, my little Vienna sausage! And the other dogs laughed and laughed. Most of the time, Oscar was upset by all this, but not today. Today was Halloween, and Oscar was thinking about other things. 
All day long at obedience school, Oscar daydreamed about Halloween night, trick-or-treats, and scary costumes. And then see what's on the board at the school? It says, today's lesson, sit, stay. When Oscar got home, he dashed upstairs to start working on his scary Halloween costume, but when he got to his room, a surprise was waiting for him. Hello, happy Halloween, my little sausage link, said Oscar's mother. I've made you a costume to wear for trick-or-treats. When Oscar saw the costume, he nearly fainted. It was a giant hot dog bun, complete with mustard. And guess who was supposed to fit in the middle? Oscar did not want to hurt his mother's feelings, so he decided to wear the silly costume. Oh, Oscar, such a good boy. That night, all the dogs on the block gathered to show off their costumes. Everyone was looking quite scary. Ooh, yeah, like a mummy and a wizard. And, oh, Dracula. Then Oscar showed up looking quite frank. When the dogs saw Oscar in his silly costume, they howled with laughter. Look at Oscar, they said. He really is a wiener dog. Poor Oscar was so embarrassed. Wiener dog, wiener dog, laughed all the other dogs as they ran off to go trick-or-treating. Oscar tried to keep up with the dogs, but his silly costume kept slowing him down. All night long, the other dogs hounded every treat they could get their paws on. So by the time Oscar got to each house, there were no treats left. Soon, trick-or-treating was over, and the dogs walked home past a spooky graveyard. Suddenly, a horrible hissing sound filled the air. Hiss! The dogs stopped dead in their tracks. Then, out of the graveyard, rose a ghastly monster. The dogs screamed for their lives. They dropped their treats and jumped into a nearby pond. The monster moved closer. Please don't eat us, cried the dogs. The monster yowled and hissed. Boo hoo hoo, sobbed the dogs. The monster jumped up and down. Somebody save us, shrieked the dogs. Just then, somebody showed up. It was Oscar. Because Oscar was so short, he saw something the other dogs had not seen. That's no monsters, cried Oscar. And with a loud bark, Oscar waddled to the rescue. Oscar chomped and tugged with all his might. Rip! And there, standing in the moonlight, were a couple of ornery cats. Mm. Help! cried the cats. We're getting attacked by a giant frankfurter. And off they ran, screaming through the graveyard. The dogs in the pond had seen the whole thing. And now it was their turn to be embarrassed. We've been chased into a pond by a couple of cats, they moaned. But Oscar was a true friend. He leapt into the water and swam out to the dogs. Oscar's silly costume made a wonderful life raft, and the dogs climbed up. All aboard, Oscar called, and he dog paddled back to shore. When they got back to dry land, all the dogs shared their Halloween treats with Oscar. Because Oscar had been so brave, the dogs changed his nickname from Wiener Dog to Hero Sandwich. And from that night on, nobody ever made fun of Oscar again. Happy Halloween. And I hope you enjoyed our story time today. And I hope you have a happy Halloween.